extended family is week 12 of 12. That means we're done. Uh, this is a 12-week semester, and uh, we'll be off for like three weeks, and we'll be starting up again uh, the week after the Easter. So this one is to earn respect, we have to give respect. So, I always like to start off with the golden rule here. So, he who has the gold makes the rules. Amen. Right? No. 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 Or, do unto others before they do unto you. That appears to have a rule. No. Okay, well then, let's look at Matthew 7, 12 and Luke 6, 31, which basically says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So treat other people like you want to be treated, because that's pretty much what you're going to get. You know, you, you reap what you sow, right? So if you're sowing kindness and gentleness and all those fruits of the Spirit, that's what you're going to get. If you're on the other side of the list, that's like this long, all those works of the flesh, you, that's what you're going to get. Okay? So if, if married couples could live... The golden rule and treat each other with the kindness and respect that they want, there'd hardly be any divorces. Yep. Yep. You know? exactly. It's when we're not doing the golden rule that we have a big problem. Okay, so what is respect? Basically, it's the value you assign to a person. And that could be you or somebody else. Self respect is a thing. And I got a thing down here. Self-respect is necessary, but you got to stay humble. So don't think too highly of yourself. But the other scripture is love your neighbor as yourself. So you got to love yourself to, to do anything. You can't give what you don't have. So respect is the value you assign to a person. Now, if you highly value a person, you're going to respect them quite a bit. If you don't value them, you're not going to respect them hardly at all. So it's the value that you, you place on someone else, in, including yourself, that we end up, that's, that's your level of respect. It's the, the value that you're assigning to a, another person. Part of the problem we're having today stems back to the, the 70s through the end of the century there, uh, they called that the me generation. Uh, yeah. And, okay, so I would have been a parent during those years, so I guess I'm somewhat responsible. But basically, the parents that were bringing up kids in those, those days, what do you want? I'll get it for you. You know, they weren't teaching them delayed gratification, they weren't teaching them to respect other people, they weren't being taught to respect authority. It was basically all about them. So now they're parents, and they're teaching their kids the same thing, and that's interesting when your parents are all about themselves and the kids are all about themselves, who's going to win? Who's taking care of who? Right? <laughs> it just gets worse. But we can look at that particular era and see where respect for others and especially like respect for your elders and those kind of things kind of went down the tubes. Uh, this is all about blended families so in a blended family you really need to show respect especially as spouses to one another so that the children can imitate that. Right? They're going to catch what you do and then that's what they're going to do. You know, we, we would rather it be do what I tell you, not what I do. Mm -hmm. Right? Do what I say, not what I do. But children tend to do what you do. Only more and worse. Yeah. More of it and worse. So it's important for the spouses, which this kind of re reinforces the pyramid, where there's God and then there's the marriage, and then the kids after the marriage, this is showing the children how to do a godly marriage. Because you're respecting one another, right? You're not 
tearing each other down. You're not speaking ugly. You're not being, ah, you know, angry and all that kind of stuff. You're, you're valuing each other, right, as equals. And that's the same for if kids are out of the house, Larry, when you get married and you become a blended family and the kids are raised and they're already out on their own. Oh, yeah. They're still watching mm -hmm. what you're doing, how you react to everyday situations with each other. So it's always good. And um, where we haven't, in this lesson, you don't really reappear to, uh, reappear to the... Uh, priority pyramid, but yet that's what you're explaining. Um, mm -hmm. We probably need to work that in at some point because that's the foundation for the ministry. Yeah. So, you know, part of well, the pyramid is basically we each have to have a vertical relationship. That's the most important one. It shares with God. Me and God. Mm -hmm. If that's good, I can have a good relationship with you. If that one's messed up, um, our thing's going to be messed up. The next most important one is the marriage. The spouses need to be the most important earthly relationship that they have. And then everything else is after that. The parent-child relationship has to come after the marriage. If the kids are more important than your spouse, it's not going to work out. It's the same thing for number two, being with your partner. If you're engaged or even dating, it's because that's yeah. why it's called a relationship right. priority so, pyramid. It's not just marriage, it's, it's relationship. Right. And then the extended family after the kids, that's the exes, grandparents, <clears throat> co-workers, friends, neighbors, all that. But there has to be healthy boundaries on those. Yeah. Especially exes. <laughs> mm, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so important for this marriage to manage any leftovers because it's too easy for the ex to try to manage you, right. which blows everything up. Mm -hmm. And they're good at that. <laughs> well, they love doing that. They don't want you to <clears throat> move on and be happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we see it all the time. I mean, it's not everybody. Some actually get along even better than when they were married, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But most of them, somebody's vindictive. Yeah. And they go out of their way to inflict pain on you mm -hmm. afterwards, mm -hmm. right? They just, and especially if you're moving ahead. Mm -hmm. Without them, they really up, get upset <laughs> about that. And then, you know, after all the family stuff comes the job and the career. And after the job and the career comes the ministry. The work of God is not God. Mm -hmm. Ministry is another job, mm -hmm. which is at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? So that's the pyramid I was just talking about. <laughs> so I did want to say something right quick. Yeah. As you were talking about the kids imitate, and I remember someone saying it's more kids. It's more about what they catch than mm -hmm. talk. So it's more caught than talk. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they're they're seeing what you yeah. do. They do what they see you do. Because mm -hmm. if they see you doing it, it must be okay. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Getting back to the respect thing. Respect starts when you see each other as a unique creation of God. Mm -hmm. and we talked way back in the, like lesson three, you know, celebrate your differences. Right? Everybody's created by God in his image. Mm -hmm. But when there's a major difference... <clears throat> you know, races, nationalities, different parts of the country, you know, all these kind of things, you know, step, kids, <coughs> all that, halves, steps, <laughs> all these kind of interesting combinations. But when you start looking at everybody as a, a child of God that was created in his image, <coughs> the, the value that you put on them should go up. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see them that way, they're just, eh, you know, there's very little value assigned to them. <coughs> so just respect the fact that each spouse is a unique, well, spouse or whoever, could be one of the kids, uh, is a unique creation of God. And we look at Psalms 139.14 where it says, you know, 
I am wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, in God's image, right? We are wonderfully made, but also fearfully made, so that we can have a fear or respect and reverence for God. Okay. This is where, in a marriage, things can get a little dicey. And so that's why it's in the scripture, Ephesians 5.33. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, respect your husband. Now, without the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be able to do that. Because these are just the opposite of what our nature is. <laughs> if we're in the flesh, we're not going to do that. Husbands are generally all about respect. You know, especially like a guy in a corporate environment, everything is a, is a respect thing. Mm -hmm. You know, rarely do you ever go around and you hear the guys going, "Hey, I love you, man." <laughs> I mean, maybe, but generally, everything that is done is based on a respect thing. Wives aren't necessarily taught to love their kids; they just that's just part of who they are, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's they're, they were created to love. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, men and women are different. Yes. In case you didn't know. <laughs> they are different. And we are told in the scriptures to do different things for each other. Husbands need respect. Mm -hmm. It's like the air we breathe. Women need love. Now, if your wife is telling you, I, I, I respect you, that's really kind of what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. But if they keep saying, hey, I love you, I love you, I love you, but then you feel disrespected, mm -hmm. something's not right. You're, you're still going to feel like something's missing. Mm -hmm. and, and the same for the wives. If the husband's telling, hey, I really respect you, they're like, <laughs> so... Do you love me? Right? That's what I want to hear. Right? So, Ephesians 5.33, Husbands, love your wife. Wives, respect your husband. And we'll get into some more things on that here after a bit. Self-respect is necessary, but stay humble. Pride goes before a fall, but God gives grace to the humble. Right? So, being humble, I guess in the fruits of the Spirit, that would be like meekness, right? Mm -hmm. You know who you are, you value yourself, but you're, uh, you know, you don't put yourself above anybody else. Mm -hmm. Respect is earned by doing what you say you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I like to think of that as like a currency exchange. You get a foreign currency, you got to go to the bank or someplace and exchange it for your kind of money. Mm -hmm. uh, you go overseas, you transfer US dollars into whatever, and you spend that where you're at, and then you have some left before you go home, you cash it in and get your dollars back. Mm -hmm. Well, the there's an exchange rate in effect all over the world that works with different currencies, so but they set the rate. Mm -hmm. They tell you what it is. So, like, for guys that want respect, the way they can earn that is by doing what they say they're going to do. Mm -hmm. That increases the value of their currency. Mm -hmm. And their spouse is the bank mm -hmm. that sets the rate. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're pretty good at doing the things you say you're going to do, then that rate goes up. But if you keep saying you're going to do stuff and then you never do, it goes down. Mm -hmm. But your spouse is going to be the one that sets it. So be aware of that. Uh, it's important to set goals because, you know, respect is earned by doing what you say you're going to do. So set some goals and meet them and then your rate goes up. Mm -hmm. Okay, any comments, questions on this? Yeah. Yeah, I did want to say something about the husband need respect and wives need love. I, remind me of that one book um, that was written years ago. 
men are from Mars and women from Venus, and being able to speak each other's language, which is right. opposite of their nature. Mm -hmm. It's the same as, uh, you know, you maybe fall in love with someone but of a different language. you got to figure out how to communicate with that person. True. Right. And one of our other couples that's been in the class several times talks on that in particular that very well. Mm -hmm. She's Italian and he's American, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> now, they've been together like 40 years. Yeah, 40. Mm -hmm. Blended family. But her thinking is in Italian. Mm -hmm. She speaks English very well. Mm -hmm. But she's processing it in Italian. Mm -hmm. He's just talking English, right? <laughs> so when he says stuff, she hears it in English, but like, translates it into Italian so that she can understand it. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it loses something in the translation. So they came up with a way, uh, and they'll be with us uh, next week for the premarital seminar, and that's one of the things they'll probably be talking about. They have to define some of the terms that they're using mm -hmm. so that each other can really understand what they're trying to say. And their big thing is, you know, one of them will say something, and then the other one will say, okay, here's what I think I heard you say. Mm -hmm. Is that what you meant? Mm -hmm. Well, if, it's, if that's really not what they meant, then it gives them an opportunity without feeling uh, mm -hmm. attacked. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay, that wasn't really what I meant. Let me try a different word here and there. And so they can rephrase. Mm -hmm. But when you're giving them the opportunity to rephrase, you're letting them save face, they don't feel attacked, mm -hmm. and arguments are not there. Mm -hmm. But if, if you say, I don't get what you're telling me, like with a, an attitude, mm -hmm. well then they feel attacked. And they feel like, well, I can't talk to you. And then, <clears throat> everything just shuts down. Mm -hmm. Right? Or they don't say anything at all. They just hear the words, and they're hurtful words, as far as they're concerned. Yeah. And they're processing it on their own, getting more angry each time they repeat it. Yeah. So it is, and we've recommended that a long time ago, too. Yeah. If there's a question and something that's <coughs> been said, to eliminate an argument or a heavy, heated discussion, talk it out, say... This is how I heard that. Did you really mean to tell me that? Mm -hmm. And let them rephrase it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the real, really important part there is to do it where it doesn't sound like you're upset. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can do it out of love, mm -hmm. it's right. like, I know you're trying to tell me something, I'm not quite getting it. Right. Is, is, can you say it a different way, maybe a different word here and there? You know, when we were going through our mess, the horse was so dead, <laughs> but we kept beating it anyway, <laughs> you know, right. and for the most part, it was all me being very technical, grammary. Oh, yeah, if I put an extra Z in the <laughs> sentence, he'd go ballistic. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> diagram her sentence, word you know. In uh, a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> and I grab a goalie. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, so we were <laughs> way off. <laughs> And that would be like a four-hour thing. <laughs> well, then we'd call our counselor after three hours of the heated discussion and we'd say, okay, this is what I said, this is what he said, help us here. Mm -hmm. And they'd laugh and they'd tell us, well, she's just being a girl, you're <laughs> just being a guy, she's saying, she's hearing it like a girl would hear it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're saying it like a guy would do it, but you're both saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. okay. And the fact that there's an extra word in there, Larry, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> and that was the hard part for me. <laughs> you know, it's it's very technical, you know, yes. computer programmer type. <laughs> you know, extra words meant different things. Oh, yes. Right. Yes. So I had to learn to kind of relax a little bit, not get yep. so picky. Yeah. And, uh, Back off. We had to. <laughs> work on that whole scenario of mm -hmm. allowing the other person to say something in a different way mm -hmm. without being, uh, you know, oh, yeah. you know, and the tone of voice, mm -hmm. big deal, you know, sometimes Carol would say something and I would hear like I'm being attacked mm -hmm. just from the tone of voice. Mm -hmm. 
and then, then my wall goes up. Mm -hmm. Everything from there on is just me being self self defense. Yeah, and right. and Larry being um, very grammatical. I mean, if you make a mistake in the words you use, or you know, you say a, a, yeah. a sentence My and there's supposed to be a comma in there, <laughs> but yet you're talking the whole sentence. He, <laughs> running on. He goes ballistic, and I'm sorry, you know, I'm just saying it like it is. <laughs> but, um, no, <laughs> you didn't say it right. Okay, Larry. Larry. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to add a uh, comment to the currency exchange. Even in business, uh, as a woman working with men, because mm -hmm. men are designed a certain way to think, right. I always, in order to keep ourselves in check or keep myself in check, I always remember, mean what you say and then say what you mean. Mm -hmm. So, right. you know, even in business, you don't say something just to keep the peace and then mm -hmm. I'll follow through. Oh, okay. So you, you're, you're going to say what you mean and then you're going to... You know, mean what you say. Don't just say something. Yeah. Just right. say it. Mean it. You know, well, the there. respect then comes right. from doing what you say you were going to so do. So that's right. very powerful in a relationship, and it also gets you pretty quickly where you need to be when it comes mm -hmm. to business. Because when Absolutely. men are there, they look at this woman and they say, "Well, she means what she says. We yeah. know she's going to follow well, and through." Then that, and there's that respect that's right. earned. And around. the reputation goes with that, that. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're doing what, if you do what you say you mean to do, mm -hmm. people get that. Mm -hmm. And that's what's kind of going to go before you. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you have... Vice versa. Uh, in, in business, when, or even in a, in a study, when you have all these little tricks and things that people tend to do, you know, I'm just going to say to keep the peace or I'm going to do this. Eventually, if you continue to do that within a, a, a reasonable amount of time, it starts to spread amongst and they start to follow that same mm -hmm. that same example that you set out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, right. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. I know when I was working as a programmer, you know, they, they started uh, well, started outsourcing some things, and you know, one of the things, just like you were saying, with the outsource people, the contractors, they didn't want to tell anybody anything bad. Mm -hmm. right? They didn't want to share any bad news. Mm -hmm. So even if things were not good. They would say, "Oh yeah, it's great. We'll be there. No problem. We'll get the, the, you know, we'll meet the deadline and all this kind of stuff." And then here comes the deadline. Oh well, you know, yes. I need a few more days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if you get the yeah. news ahead of time, you prepare for that. So it's like in America as <laughs> right. well. We talk about it ahead of time. You're you're preparing for that. Then it's right. not like wham, we got to hit the rear end there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's a big part of you know a relationship is you you talk about stuff. Communicate. You know, plan for the worst, hope for the best, right? But it's it's when you're caught off guard mm -hmm. that things happen. Right. Right. Karen had something she wanted to add. Well, I, I mean, I was just going to ask you to share about how, with that communication mm -hmm. and how it's worded. I love the story that you said is how you asked Larry to take the trash out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, got, I can't use the word need. Yeah. See, there, there's a few things here that are needs. <laughs> see, he wrote it on board. That word is not in our vocabulary. Right. We cannot use that. And I can't. Now, I'm glad you brought that up. Because this, this is a big respect thing. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. We have needs. Yeah. And they're different. Yeah. Now, to me, I had issues with being told you need to I'm fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. Asking. Well, there's perception <laughs> and there's reality, right? Break it down, MC Grammar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Now, my perception of what she was asking was that it was a command. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to take the trash out. You need to do this or do that, mm -hmm. right? And I never really thought too much of it until we started getting into, you know, how God set things up and all that. And that's when I started pushing back on some things. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what happened to you? But <laughs> there was a big difference to me between being told, because it was a respect issue, right? And I'm looking for respect. Mm -hmm. And she was like, in charge, mm -hmm. you need to do this. It was like an order from a commanding officer. <laughs> that was not. 
that's different. That's my perception. I understand, but that was like there's, there's a huge difference when, you know, like, when my wife would ask me nicely, would you please take the trash out? Or would you please do this? And say, oh, yeah, no problem. But if I'm being told, you need to do this, well, then it's like, you know, the finger pointing and, you know, it just felt like a command. So, and I'm like... So in your house, you're not allowed to use that word? No, either. that word is not allowed. Okay. No. <laughs> so you've learned. It's, it's a preference it. not to be used. Okay, yeah. preference. <laughs> it just sets him off. Occasionally it slips out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Danny. This is going to sound wrong. And you're probably going to hear about it when we leave. Well, it's a perception. Okay, so we'll, we'll try to perceive it as not being wrong. <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay. There's an unwritten code against the American male with women. Mm -hmm. There is. Yeah. Because anytime Susie like gives me the watch for her, at, like at the bank or something, if it's a woman, she bonds with her immediately. Oh, sure. <laughs> no, I swear, it's the truth, man. It's a relational women, thing. They don't even have to know each other. <laughs> But all of a sudden, they're on the same side, and I'm out here, and you know, all of them. It's part of the sisterhood. Oh, is that what it is? But we don't have that. We don't have the brotherhood. We no. have the sisterhood. Right. Yeah. yeah. You sounded that right to me. I'm pulling you. Okay, so set goals. Need them. Goals should be smart. S M A R T. Specific, measurable, achievable, realistic. Realistic. You had to spell it again. Timely. And timely. Right? If if it doesn't have any of those, it's just a dream. It's not a goal. Right? And if you find you can't meet the goal, for example, if you're doing like family goals. Uh, like if you tell the kids, you know, this year we're going to go to Disneyland. And the middle of the year or close to the time you're going to go, you end up needing a whole set of tires for the car or the hot water heater goes out. You need money for that. Tell the kids, say, you know what? We've had some extra expenses this year. I'm sorry, but we're not going to be able to go to Disneyland this year. We're going to put it on the calendar for next year. But let's make a second choice. Where else could we go as a family to do something? Mm -hmm. Don't let them think right up till the last minute that they're going to go. Right. I mean, they understand, but you have to be truthful with the kids. Right. That's kind of what we yeah. want. And that, see, that's part of you know doing what you say you're going to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If you even with children wait till the day you're supposed to yeah, go, or that fair. you know that Friday night before you take off on the weekend. Uh, well, we're not going. Yeah. Now you just lied. It's not right. fair. But if you tell them, you know, hey, got some bad news, you know, this came up, that came up, we're not not going, we're just not going no. next weekend, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're still keeping it on the list of things to do, but we can't do it right now because of this, this, and this, right? Um, can you move the camera for me? Yeah. So I'm going to move over to the other screen, the other whiteboard and do the rest of the class over here. Okay. Now, some of the things we've talked about so far, you know, it's all about respect, but then there's two different ways of looking at respect. One is position and the other is performance. We've been talking more about the performance so far. Uh, you know, you, you earn respect by doing what you say you're going to do and the whole currency exchange thing. And that's a good way to get respect from especially people you don't really know, but also your spouse and your kids by doing the things and setting goals, meeting them, and all that. But there are some respect items that come from position. Mm -hmm. We respect God, not so much because of what he does for us, but because of who he is. Yeah. Right? That's position. And we can look at the first and fifth commandments. The first one was, you know, have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a position thing. 
And number five is honor thy father and mother. Mm -hmm. That's a position thing. It doesn't say anything about if they do right. Yeah. <laughs> right? It just says do it because of who they are, mm -hmm. not what they do. Mm -hmm. Right? And so there's yeah. those kind of things where it's important to have a respect for certain people because of the position that God has put them in. Mm -hmm. And we, we need to look at it as that's the position God has put them in, not because of what they've done to get there. Because they wouldn't be there if God didn't want them there. The other one is, you know, promises kept, like we've been talking about, that's the respect earned through performance. Mm -hmm. uh, we have heard so many times, you know, we... We let the couples know that, you know, husbands, you need to love your wife, and wives, you need to respect your husband, and immediately, so I'll respect him when he respects me, mm -hmm. right. or when he does this, or he does that. It's all about performance. Mm -hmm. right. It's not because of position at all, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so many times. <laughs> but we look at Proverbs 1, 1 through 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now that fear is not, ooh, I'm scared. It's a reverence, it's a respect, you know, because of his position. He made us. He created the universe. That, I mean, that's pretty awesome. But we need to know that it's because of him that we're even here. Mm -hmm. And when we put him in that position of being God, now we can kind of fill in the rest of the stuff that we're supposed to do. <clears throat> but if we think we're God, you know, that fear isn't there and we're going to do a lot of stupid stuff. Yeah. And I can attest to that. Uh, Proverbs 16.31, Leviticus 19.32 is more or less just respect your elders, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's another thing about position, not necessarily respect. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've had several generations now where that, well... A lot of different things have happened, but a lot of it's just we haven't been teaching the kids. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, 100 years ago, people didn't go very far from home. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they went 50 miles from home, that was a long way, <laughs> right? So the family was pretty much, you know, at least grandma and mom and dad and the kids were all, you know, in the same town for the most part. And now, you know, my folks were in Ohio. I'm out here in Arizona. You know, our the older daughter, grew, her kids, they grew up in Pennsylvania. We're out here. You know, families are pretty far apart. Mm -hmm. You can't just, like, drive over. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a big deal. <clears throat> you know, airfare, two weeks off to drive, you know, mm -hmm. there and back, you know, those kind of things. I mean, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So the, the family units have kind of spread out. Mm -hmm. And so there's that that tends to break things down. But, you know, most... Most of what we're seeing today is, you know, in those days when grandma and grandpa got feeble, they just lived with the kids, mm -hmm. right? The kids took care of mom and dad. Well, now it's like, what nursing home can we put you in, mm -hmm. right? We're too busy. We can't deal with that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not like it used to be. But the kids have no time or use for an old person, mm -hmm. You know, especially like teens today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, there's some that are really good about that, but most of them could care less about the old people. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know how to use their phones. They don't know anything about the Internet, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff. So they, they just figure they're stupid. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't have anything, they don't have any value to add. And they don't have anything in common with them. Mm -hmm. So they don't have a way they feel they can relate. Right. Well, and, you know, so now they're, you know, two or three generations through public education or public indoctrination. And so their, you know, the political views are way different than the older folks. You know, the older folks tend to be a little more conservative. The younger ones, not so much. So there's a lot of, you know, who needs that kind of thing. The generation gaps. Yeah. I mean, that's always been there. Mm -hmm. But it's just really pronounced nowadays. Because we're in it. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's probably why. We're going through it. We're going through it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the other things here is the crazy cycle. Uh, if anybody ever read the book Love and Respect by Emerson Eckridge, right? Uh, that's kind of where this came from. 
And as far as like the communication thing and this, the needs over here, the love and respect, that's basically where that whole book came from was Ephesians 5.33. And this guy was a pastor. He'd been a pastor for 20 years. He read through the Bible every year for 20 years. And this one time he came to the scripture and was like, why aren't they the same thing? Why isn't it just love and love? Why are they, or respect and respect? And so that's where a lot of this came from, is we have different needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the, for me, the big thing was what we need is not what our nature does. Mm -hmm. And look at those two as just um, two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when a woman feels love, she feels respected. When a man feels respected, he feels love. Yeah, True. right. That's right. So that's where this thing kind of comes from. But because we tend to be in the flesh a lot, we look at this, and I, I think he called it the crazy cycle. Sometimes we we'll call it the marriage merry-go-round. You know, we've been married almost forty years. We still get on this ride every now and then. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We just don't stay on it very long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you have this knowledge. Yeah. To, to get the, the thing is to recognize it. Mm -hmm. Everybody does it. Everybody's going to do it. Just recognize that you're on it and then get off. Mm -hmm. Right? So you know, we, generally we started off now. The other last week we talked about responding versus reacting. Yeah. Right? There's a reason it says react. Mm -hmm. Okay. Without love, looking at Ephesians 5:33. Without love, she reacts mm -hmm. without respect. Mm -hmm. It's a reaction, mm -hmm. right? a fleshy thing. And without respect, he reacts without love. Mm -hmm. So now you're on the merry-go-round. Mm -hmm. Round and round you go. Nobody knows where it's going to stop. Everybody knows this. Right? <laughs> now, if you put more positive and respond in here, it's like, with love, she responds with respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with respect, he responds with love. Mm -hmm. right? That's how that works. But because we're, we have a fleshy, fleshly nature, that's our nature, mm -hmm. right? without the Holy Spirit, we're just not being the flesh. Yeah. And even with the Holy Spirit, we're going to be in the flesh occasionally. Mm -hmm. But this happens. And if you're look, if you look for it, you know you're around married people all the time, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. But when you can see it in others, it'll be easier to see it yourself, yeah. right? You got to be aware of it, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I never heard this before mm -hmm. until Emerson Egrich came to town, right? <laughs> and he used to talk like on this one. It's like respect is uh, like blue. Mm -hmm. But that, that's the air that's in the tank that the men breathe okay. out of. You know, think scuba diving, right? you got to fill your tank up with something. Mm -hmm. For us, we want that tank to have respect in it. Mm -hmm. And for the ladies, it's, they want love in the tank. Mm -hmm. And that's the air that we're breathing. And if we're on this thing, we're stepping on each other's air hose. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, you know, we feel like we're being choked mm -hmm. because we're not getting the air that we need mm -hmm. from our supposed loved one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, again, this is the fleshly version. You can turn it around and make it positive and do the with and respond and then it works like it's supposed to mm -hmm. according to the scripture. But, you know, going back to some of the beginning stuff, okay, so you got to put a value on this person you're having a relationship with. And it needs to be pretty high. It actually, it should be just slightly higher than you put on yourself. right? Because we're supposed to value each other more than ourselves. Mm -hmm. But you still got to love yourself. You got to respect yourself and put a, a decent value on yourself so that you don't allow somebody else to mess you up. Mm -hmm. right? Devaluing. Yeah. You can't let someone else put the value on you. And that's what happens a lot of times. Well, uh, especially, you know, young kids, they get married, they don't know the Lord, they just expect each other to take care of each other. You know, <laughs> you're going to complete me. Yeah, complete. Yeah. You know, but we get filled from above mm -hmm. so that we can pour out. 
you know, and I said it in this class before, if I'm getting what I need from you, then you're going to be short something, right? And if you're already kind of short, and I'm taking something out of you, you're really going to be short. Mm -hmm. And it, to me, it's like two vacuum cleaners being put the hoses together. You know, you're just sucking the life out of each other if you're not getting filled from the Lord so that you can pour out, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's how that works. Um, any other comments, questions? We got through this kind of quick today. Oh, we, I know we, we got some awards yeah. to give. We got, yeah, it's graduation day, so we got some diplomas to give out. It was a potluck day. You know, it's always diplomas and a potluck <laughs> at the end of the class. So. I just wanted to say something. Just with, with that crazy cycle and being there with, with my husband, knowing it, it just takes one, just one of you to set that cycle right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so hard because each one of us get in our flesh and we have those expectations mm -hmm. from one another. We have to remember that we can't allow our spouse's behavior to affect ours. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. taking every thought captive. It is. Right. And once even that one person starts, me as a wife, respecting mm -hmm. my husband, mm -hmm. over time, since I'm following the order of God, everything comes aligned, but it just, it just takes that one person and that time and prayer and trust in the Lord to work mm -hmm. it yeah, all out. From now, I'm glad you brought that up, because if you look at this, you know, there's a scripture that says, you know, a kind word turns away wrath, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So like I said, it only takes one of you to get this, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you can, you know, start speaking life into this thing again, but... This is when both parties are messed up, <laughs> right? If one can recognize it, and that's the whole point, is recognizing where you're at so that you can be the one to say, hey, you know, we're, we're on the, we're the merry-go-round here. Let's, let's take a couple minutes and get off. Let's pray. Let's do something. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes what happened to me and Susie is like, she's called the spirit out on me. <laughs> She's like, that's the devil right there, Danny. Yeah. I'm like, if you're honest with yourself, you're like, yeah, it is. That's not how I feel at all. You know? Right. But something's getting me into this flesh, angry mood, and I'm saying stuff that I really don't mean, mm -hmm. and it's just causing damage. So she just like calls the spirit out on me, and I'm like, you're right. And then I calm down and I get back in the spirit. The right one. Mm -hmm. The right one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were there. I mean, Oh yeah, big time. You know, I always thought I was a pretty decent guy, but when we were going through our thing, I was pretty ugly. <laughs> and it, it was four four months of hell, <laughs> right? And we were saying and doing stuff that was like we'd never ever done before no. for twenty plus years. No. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, um, I think we can all find uh, what works in just reflecting back to the scriptures and the things we've learned. For us, I can tend to get off the miracle round because of the stress that goes on around me pretty quick, and Kelly's very good with kind words, and that's true. As soon as a kind word comes out of his mouth, the first thing I think of is, uh, you know that saying that says um, that we're two of one, you know, become one. H however, what I think about is we're one unit, one mm -hmm. unit, one mm -hmm. unit. I keep going back to that, right. you know, we're one unit, and just remembering that. And as you were saying, you know, um, Susie calling it out, and then just remembering, okay, you know, they're right. The kind words, the things, whatever it takes, it's just mm -hmm. you know recall mm -hmm. the scriptures and the things <laughs> that our purpose, one unit, one unit in three, you know the Lord mm -hmm. and us. And you know one of the greatest things that the, our counselors told us was, marriage is spiritual warfare, and your spouse is not your enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if you get those two things, then when you get on this, you realize you're being attacked. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm hearing words from my spouse I don't want to hear in a tone of voice I don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not her, it's the enemy. Mm -hmm. Using her as a tool, yeah. right? So when you look at it from a spiritual perspective, now you can fight it from a spiritual perspective, which is what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's when we get flesh to flesh that we are losers. Mm -hmm. That's when we lose. Yeah. But it's, you know, 
Somebody needs to go time out. Yeah, exactly. We're, we are being attacked, mm -hmm. and we did that, and it would get pretty, pretty crazy, and then, mm -hmm. you know, we just kind of come together and do a bear hug or something, mm -hmm. and say, okay, we're being attacked here, let's focus, we have to come together to fight the real enemy, yes. and it's not us, <laughs> but it, I mean, it was scary a couple times. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because... Uh, for 23 years, you let me wear the mantle, and I called all the shots in our blended family. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you decided that we were going to get Christian help mm -hmm. and save this marriage, put this back the way it should be, God's way, and he started having a voice. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't think so, Larry. Where is that coming from? Uh-uh. <laughs> He speaks now? No way. <laughs> so we had a lot of that yeah. crazy cycle, and, let me tell you. Yeah. And a lot of this was because of that. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's like, okay, well, i got to step it up here. Uh -huh. You know? What? And, you know, for all those years, it was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, I mean. You yeah. know, just avoiding conflict. Mm -hmm. what, what do you want to do? Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. You know? And then I'm learning what my role and responsibility is here. And I got to answer to God on this stuff. And it was like, you know, I'm starting to speak scriptures. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what are you been beating me over the head with the Bible for? Yeah, you know? well, I and, gave it right back. And, and stuff like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you're going to be attacked when you try to do something for God. Mm -hmm. Right. I, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And, but you got to remember, it's not... The person that you're right. fighting, right. they're being used as a tool. Mm -hmm. That was, when I heard it that way, that really helped me a lot. You know, it was like, in the old films, the old movies, you know, there's always some kingdom attacking another kingdom and the castle, and so they, they bring the tree along with them to beat the gates down and all that. Well, mm -hmm. when they finally break the gates down, they just drop the tree, mm -hmm. right? That was just the tool to get the gates open. Mm -hmm. Then all the soldiers run in without the tree and, you know, start shooting arrows and swords and all kind of stuff. Right. And that's where the battle is, you know. But it wasn't the tool, mm -hmm. right? And that's what we got to remember. It's that what somebody's saying, somebody's doing, that's because they're being the tool. Mm -hmm. And if you put your Jesus glasses on, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you know, what would Jesus say Jesus. and what would Jesus do and boy that used to first time I heard that I thought what <laughs> but try it mm -hmm. I mean it will humble you like you never have been humbled mm -hmm. so, so I use them a lot yeah. <laughs> so yeah you got to get your spiritual glasses on right. so you can see what's really going on behind the scenes yes yeah. right. exactly right. I think, you know, going back to the self-answers in terms of way we're at, I, I think that a lot of us, you know, Kelly works in customer service, I've worked in customer service. We know that if we keep ourselves, and you hear people teach that, if you keep yourself or your voice soft, eventually that person will come down and match you. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to realize that we can do that in our own relationships and in our marriage. Oh, yeah. Just a lot of times we just throw the rules out the window and just go <laughs> for it because we, oh, yeah. because we have that intimacy with right. each other and we don't have... The, Put that value of respect on each other That's like good. we would a customer yeah and we need to use that same principles and those same skills in our marriage just mm -hmm. like we you know a customer comes at us and talks all kind of crazy to us <laughs> we're not going to sit there and and, and match them because we know we'll lose our job we're thinking about that you could lose your marriage you could lose your wife if right. you don't use those same principles and those tools and right. talking with each other keeping that that down so that you know eventually they will match it because like you said they're tools but there's there's something underlying that mm -hmm. but you know getting being able to get to the point where you get off of that crazy cycle mm -hmm. and then talking about the position and performance if we respect the position eventually the performance will follow right. it's first things first yes first That's things good. first we, we we want someone to perform but we don't give them the respect to their position that I'm glad you brought that up that is huge mm -hmm. because so many spouses 
disrespect the other one, but expect a high level of performance. Yes. Right. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Just like you're saying. Mm -hmm. And that performance is never going to get there mm -hmm. because why? Mm -hmm. Why should I? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You're disrespecting me. Why should I perform up here and get disrespected? Mm -hmm. And talk. I remember you like to use that. We have expectations up yeah, here. Expectations are up here, but you're talking to me down here. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to get up here. Right. Right. You know, and managing our expectations of others is part of the respect. Mm -hmm. You know, valuing them high enough. Mm -hmm. Now, our expectations should be pretty high from God, but pretty low from our spouses mm -hmm. or whoever, mm -hmm. right? Kids, coworkers. When our expectations of someone else's performance is not met, we get disappointed. Mm -hmm. Now, if it happens enough, then we start getting bitter mm -hmm. and resentful, and now we're really messed up. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, keep the expectations low. The, I always gotta bring up the restaurant down the street here. Uh, you know, so if, if our food doesn't meet your expectations, lower your expectations. <laughs> So, okay, anything else? Larry, I just want to say, uh, if you've ever come out of a really terrible relationship, and you're just decimated, and you've got all this baggage and everything, and it starts coloring your new relationship, mm -hmm. and you start seeing the sinister thing, and reading things, and just the same tools that saved you are protected you in the former Mm -hmm. uh, God just kind of said something to me one day that just laid me low, man. He said, uh, That's a way of doing I heard a voice to tell me, uh, she's, you know, um, she's not your security. Mm, that's right. She's not your security. I'm your security. Mm, right. Yeah. Right? And then it just took all this off of me, and then I can do all these principles yeah. because I'm not looking to her to measure up beyond my broken relationship for, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. 30 years. That's huge. And uh, and then I don't have to read everything into every situation yeah. because my security is in the Lord That's and right. Him alone. That is so relationship. That's so good. glad you brought that up. That's good. That's really good. And to yeah. piggyback off of that, we put our faith so much more in people, mm -hmm. and that is why we are so disappointed all the sure. time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's why our yeah. first commandment says, like, "Do not honor any other God." Yeah. Sometimes That's we right. look at people as if they're God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't things. do it intentionally, but they yeah. become our so idols later. Yeah. We're doing we end up with other idols, mm -hmm. uh, especially spouses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we might uh, wrap up this session and say again when the next one will be, Larry, for the listeners, because we have them all over the, the United States, as well as we even found out one time there's somebody listening in the Netherlands. So wow. <laughs> we never know, but tell us yeah. this is the last class, but right. will we start again? Yeah. Once again, this is week 12 of 12. It's the end of the semester. Uh, we're getting ready to hand out some diplomas and stuff. The next class of blended families Mine. on Sundays will be the Sunday after Easter, which is April the 28th. 28th of April. So come back and join us. Uh, we'll be back, but it'll be a few weeks. And uh, our website is blendedfamiliesministry.org. And a shout out to christianlivingradio.com for putting our podcasts on iHeartRadio and Spotify. Thanks, Kenyatta.